What is happening, Magnesites? Now that one was hard for me. You know, I heard a lot of people cried in episode three, but this one was hard for me. Cause I have a little brother and I'm the I'm the big brother, so if you saw the episode you understand why, like like I'm misty right now, like I don't understand what it was about how they told the story with this, but they did it really well. Um, with this, they changed a few things. Um, and um, Sam, the little brother, is actually deaf. Um, which I really didn't like at first. It eventually... Because of how they told the story and how, you know, things went, they even pulled some mistiness, some glazed eyes out of me. I'll let them go for that. But the um, the episode starts out with um, showing a little bit of backstory with them. Um, how they become wanted by Kathleen. Kathleen, to me, still, it, I still don't get why she's the leader. I still, it... it it doesn't make any sense for me. It feels like they were checking boxes with this. However, um, the, 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 the death that they deal to her makes it all worth it because she's like a psychopath. She talks about her brother in it and about how he wouldn't want her to be like this. He'd be, you know, just horrified by the atrocities that she's committed and the things that she's done and she'd want him to be forgiving of a lot of things, and uh, she's not like that. They have her be behaving like a complete psychopath in this. Um, you know, she's interrogating people for for um, for information in the beginning. There's a scene where she claps and scares everybody. Like so, she's known for being sinister. You can tell the fact that she could clap for you know and scare everybody in a room like that. It, it lets you know she she's got a reputation. So, but um, and it also shows how Henry and Sam uh, become acquainted with the doctor, or how they knew him, and he was hide they they were hiding out with him, and shows when the doctor doesn't come back. So they're kind of like you know he, he's been caught, you know. So, you know they've run into Ellie and Joel, and you know negotiate and like look, it's, I'm not gonna kill you, just. I need help. And, and you know, this Henry seemed less capable than the Henry in the video game. And Sam is several years younger than Ellie. In the game, Sam is like, I think, like a year younger than her. And they're closer in age. They're more like peers. And it even alludes to the fact that he's kind of got a crush on Ellie. Ellie doesn't have a crush on him in the game. But they get along, so they're like peers. In this, it's more like Ellie is the older sister, and she's got a little brother. So there's an older sister, little brother type of dynamic that's going on with Sam in this, right? So they leave during the day rather than at night, like in the game, to go into the tunnels. And they do run into the whole uh, thing where you found all the notes and you find that the guy had invited um, the woman with children or whatever to live there in the tunnels with him. The guy that got like, what, what was he? he, got shipwrecked or whatever from the game. You never see him, but you see all the notes that he left and the, the place that he built for himself in there. And um, they show, you know, the playroom and everything. I'm like, okay, okay. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm getting along with the changes, but I'm, you know, I'm also like looking at different things that they've added in there. So, they leave during the day rather than at night. But then when they leave and they're getting shot at by the sniper, that's at night. And Gold, Joel definitely made it around to get him <laughs> faster than I did in the game. So when Joel gets up there, it's not some young dude in a hat or whatever. It's an old man who's on the walkie-talkie with Kathleen, apparently. She's like, hold on, hold on to him or whatever. And Joel's like, look, he's like, like, I think Joel's just like, give me the gun. And, you know, he was like, don't do this. Don't do this. And the dude, so, you know, Joel had to kill him. So he killed the old man, took the gun. 
And as soon as he takes the gun, pretty much, all of a sudden, here come Kathleen and her crew, bulldozing through, chasing Ellie, Sam, Henry, through everything. And there's a and Joel is picking people off. So you get to picking people off part of the game, right? So then there's a giant explosion from one of the trucks or whatever. And I was like, wait a minute. We ain't seen no infected. And apparently they supposedly live underneath the city. They've been driven down there. That's what Henry said. Three years ago, they were driven down there. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I'm, th th I'm thinking here. And man, Kathleen almost has her hands on Henry. He gives up. He doesn't want her to hurt the kids. She's talking psychopath stuff about kids dying all the time. Sorry, maybe they were meant to die. You know, all that type of crap. She pulls out the gun on him, and boom! Yo, they came out like World War Z. <laughs> out of the ground running, tearing her men up. I mean, a whole lot more of her men showed up than what you had to pick off in, in, the, in the game. So, oh man, they going off. Trying to shoot them, trying to mow them down. Joe's trying to save them from getting... Yo, Ellie got in her neck stabs. They they had Ellie take out two of the uh the uh, I was gonna call them walkers. <laughs> two of the infected with, with her neck stab from the game. I'm like, okay, throw shit in there. So um, you know, shows the zombies trying to get at Henry and Sam. And uh so um Kathleen gets jumped on by this little girl that's infected, right? But it showed Ellie was attacked by her first, and she was all doing that, like, possessed type of walking and flipping over and walking backwards type of shit you be seeing in possessed movies and shit. Yo, I was like, okay, that's a nice addition to her. <laughs> so she got hers, and it felt so good to see her get hers. So I'm like, as much as I felt like she didn't work. She was such a sick individual, and she got what she deserved. So she got a great villain ending. So for that, um, so um, you know, oh, and the bloater came out. The bloater came out, took out the voice of Tommy. Yo, he he did the whole head rip on him. He he did the the fatality, the the death. That normally you or Ellie gets. <laughs> or I mean Joel gets usually. But so I'm like, only thing he didn't do, he didn't throw the bombs. He didn't throw the, you know, bombs of spores because tendrils or everything or whatever. So anyway, they get away, and all the infected are just rushing into town along with the bloater, destroying everybody. So they end up in um the hotel. The motel, and you want, you know, and I'm like, all right, here's now. Like, well, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen, man? Oh, so, um, um, Joel and Henry are talking in one room, and then it shows Ellie and and Sam talking. And Sam's got this little etch a sketch type of thing. I remember I had one when I was a kid, you know, you could write on it and you lift the paper and it disappears, you write on it again. So they're talking back and forth. And he asks her, Is he scared? Is she scared? And, he said, if you turn into a monster, are you still in, inside? You know, are you still you? And um, he shows her his leg, and she, she cuts herself, and she's, she shows him he's afraid. She says, my medicine is blood. Because she says, I have a scar. Listen, you'll, you'll be you know, basically like, here, you'll be okay. So I'm thinking, oh, are they going to change this? Are they not going to kill him? You know what I mean? I'm like, wow. So, you know, she wakes up in the morning, and he's sitting by the window in the sunlight. And she goes over to him to make sure he's okay. He's infected, attacks her immediately, and the whole thing happens, you know, they bust into the room, and, you know, Joel goes to, you know, and, you know, he's shooting at him, you know, Henry's shooting at him, and, like, no, like, no, like, I'll take care of this, just like in the game, and he kills him, man, and that was, like, really hard for me to see, because it's weird, man, when you've, when you have a particular family situation, and you just think about it, because... You know, I wasn't that much older. I was four years older than my brother. He's more years older than I was. But it's like, 
you take yourself there emotionally. Like if your your family was infected and you had to shoot one of them, like how could you? They played that really well, man, really well. And he took himself out just like in the game. That whole thing transpired the same way. And uh, I was like, man, I'm tearing up. I'm like, wow, that's really, this really messed me up. Like in the game, it comes kind of abruptly and it happens and it didn't do that to me. Like it bothered me, you know, but not like this. I don't know, something about how they did this. They did this really well and uh, they buried them and showed them burying them and she left the notepad saying I'm sorry on his grave and it was out. It was a damn good episode. It was a damn good episode. I'm like, wow, they pulled, they pulled almost tears out of me. Great job. Great job. Um, let me give this 4.5 out of 5. Woos for this. Um, my reaction to Fast 10 that got copyright claimed is on Patreon and YouTube memberships if you want to see it, along with the reaction to this episode. If you want to see Tyrone Magnus get misty. And I will see y'all in the next one. Man. 10 million subscribers. Woo!